Well, hello everybody and welcome to Daily Devotions for uh, the 13th Wednesday, the 13th of May. How did it get to be the 13th of May already? This month is wild. And uh, there's a sense in which we're sort of getting into a rhythm of this new normal. I hope we are getting into a rhythm because, uh, you know, if you're in lockdown and you're isolated, uh, it can become quite monotonous. Uh, our chair of district, Jill, was sharing with the superintendent ministers yesterday that, um, you know, there's something to learn here from the life of those who are uh, monastics. They, you know, they spend their their lives literally um, in prayer and the rhythm of isolation. Uh, and uh, what they share with us is that having a rhythm to the day uh, and for them it is morning prayer it's uh, lunchtime or midday prayers it's evening prayers and then complain right at the end of the day and that uh, basing uh, uh, the day around meals and, and around rhythms of prayer uh, is so important and that resource i've been using on a monday particularly the northumbria community has not just morning prayers which i've been using but also afternoon and evening and complain uh, so a lot of the uh, monastic orders and um, uh, those sort of traditions have those sort of rhythms to the day. So make sure you're getting a rhythm to your day, whatever you do. Uh, I'm coming to you straight from another uh, service this morning. Not one I was leading this time, but one I was just enjoying and taking part in myself. And if you want to look at that, it's at Cliff College uh, on Facebook and their live morning prayers. And uh, I, I sometimes jump in on it. This morning I jumped in on it particularly to support my own daughter, Lauren, who's the uh, festival coordinator, the Cliff College Festival coordinator. She was leading us in uh, some prayers in the Taizé tradition, which is a monastic community in the middle of France, uh, which uh, many people know and love and uh, draw deeply from. Um, just when I'm thinking about Lauren, two two things um, on Taizé. Sunday night this week, um, at seven o'clock, we're going to try and do a live um, TSA service. And uh, again, I'm going to be uh, inviting Lauren to help me with that. Information how you connect up with that online uh, will be available in the next sort of 24, uh, 48 hours before the weekend, certainly. And the other thing just to say about Cliff College is that they have a festival every year. Uh, people all around this area, uh, since I came to live here six years ago, talk about how they used to go to Cliff on Whit Monday and uh, you know the big festival. Well, the festival has been growing and growing over the last couple of years. Indeed, Lauren's job is to help it grow and develop and fantastic program in place for this year. But then, of course, you can't have it because you can't have big gatherings. But what they've done ingeniously, uh, her and a guy called Ali Johnson at the college, uh, they've worked really hard with the rest of the staff and speakers and uh, they, they've put together a Cliff College Festival at home. So throughout the whole weekend from the, the bank holiday weekend from Friday through to Monday night, uh, you'll be able to share in the Cliff College Festival with a number of different keynote speakers and sessions being led by a whole variety of people. Uh, on uh, overall sort of theme of the global vision and this time with the global pandemic we're being made very aware of being part of a global village that we're all in this together and seeking to find solutions to the pandemic uh, together. So that's Good College Festival and again we'll make more information available about that near the time. Uh, for today, <coughs> I, I wanted to draw your attention to Cliff College, not Cliff College, Christian Aid. Uh, this is Christian Aid Week. Normally we'd be sharing around the community with um, uh, lunches, uh, you know, to raise some money for Christian Aid. But of course, we can't have lunches at the moment. So uh, nonetheless, uh, the point is not just raising the money, although that's important. Uh, the point is to help us think about the, the global vision. So... Um, in our prayers today, we do that, uh, and on the um, on the uh, circuit website, we'll put a link to the Christian Aid resources that are available. Maybe just to use in your own prayers. Uh, uh, there's videos there that you can watch instead of today of me showing a, a song video. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we look at one of the Christian Aid Week videos. 
uh, <clears throat> to challenge our thinking and to help us to see our own lives in the perspective of the challenges that others face on a wider scope. Uh, for my own devotions, what I want to offer to you is some reflections this morning. Uh, first of all, a prayer from Cyprian of Carthage, um, who lived back in the early 200s of the third century, and um, whose writings and, and leadership at the time continue to uh, be held in some esteem by all the traditions. Um, so I'm going to start by offering this prayer from Cyprian of Carthage. Let us pray. Preferring nothing to you, O Christ, let us hold fast to your love. Embrace your cross and honour your name. Let conviction mark our speech. Courage our life and patience our faith. For your own name's sake. Amen. As we continue in prayer, um, we're asked today to think about Christians in the Caribbean and the Americas. So we're thinking about Cuba, the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And as we pray for Cuba, uh, as I looked at this earlier on, I, I remember something that Martin Atkins shared with us a number of years ago, maybe over a decade ago now, that said that uh, Cuba um, had had an experience whereby during the sort of time when communism um, and the atheism that came with it uh, were dominant and rife in Cuba, uh, the churches were nearly extinguished. Um, and the Christian, the Methodists, uh, the Methodist Christians in, um, in Cuba had a prayer. And it was a profound prayer, and it's one that's stuck with me since Martin shared it with us. Uh, Lord, prepare us for death. They were ready for the church to die, and even themselves through persecution to die. Lord, prepare us for death and revive us. And uh, there was a sense in which uh, they were leaving the options in God's hand. Well, the church that uh, now exists in Cuba that Martin spoke about, um, is one that is vibrant, lively, um, experiencing revival. They were ready to die, uh, but the Lord renewed them instead and revived them. Uh, and indeed, uh, that's a great prayer to pray over every single church on our circuit, and indeed over every Methodist church in the country, every Baptist, Anglican, uh, everywhere where there's a church. Uh, Lord, prepare us for death and renew us or revive us. Uh, so Cuba, we pray for today in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And it's a great privilege and honour today to be praying for the Darlington district. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Darlington. Uh, I know uh, Durham uh, reasonably well, but uh, I'm delighted to be praying for Darlington today because uh, its chair of district, Richard Andrew, uh, was my former colleague at the York Institute for Community Theology where we were responsible for training lay and ordained people uh, over, well, certainly for me, it was a five year period for Richard, it was longer. Um, but uh, he went on to serve in the connectional team and then now as the chair of district in Darlington. So I'm grateful for his prayer today, thinking of Richard, thinking about all the people in the Darlington district, some of whom are known to us, uh, previous connections from here. And um, so I'm going to invite us to pray Richard's prayer now. So let's pray. Gracious God, whose loving kindness has no limits, teach us afresh the way of Christ. Where we have felt discouraged, renew us through signs of hope. Where we have been tempted to give up, grant us strength and faith to face the day. Where we have grown anxious about the future, Give us courage to plant the seeds of tomorrow in acts of love, a radical love today. Renew us by your spirit and set us free to serve you so that the whole of creation may rejoice in your name. Amen. And Richard uh, takes his inspiration from a prayer, uh, the Romero prayer. Um. 
these are days when we're learning as well as you know waiting for things to change but uh you know you, you can wait uh, we'll be waiting a long time i know we've got we've seen the government's advice that says that you know churches may possibly uh, be allowed to open again uh, after the 4th of uh, july wasn't it but opening them up and being able to hold uh, public acts of worship where you've crowds of people together um and you know alongside all the rules of social distancing it is not clear in any way that we will be able to have services after the fourth so if people are sitting at home now thinking gosh we're going to start church again on the fourth of july whoa hang on a moment that's not what's been said and uh we need to listen ongoingly to the government's advice and we need to listen to the wider church's advice about this certainly one of my uh superintendent colleagues in the area in a meeting I was in yesterday was saying he really doesn't anticipate uh, that we'll be able to have regular acts of corporate worship in the way that we've been used to do for a long, long time yet, even into the next year. So in the meantime, we've got to figure out what it is to be church. <laughs> in the meantime, we've got to figure out what it is to be church in this context of the coronavirus and social isolation and distancing and all that. Um, so we, we, we've got to work on that. Uh, we haven't stopped being a community who worship. We haven't stopped being a community who care for each other. We haven't stopped being a, a community who are committed to being disciples, who follow Christ, who are seeking to uh, honour him in everything we do and say and are. We haven't stopped uh, having a commitment to serve as and how we can. And we haven't stopped being a people who have a gospel, a good news to share of God's love, of God's acceptance, of God's... Uh, Blessing and hope, everything the gospel has for us in Jesus, our Lord. So the calling of the Methodist Church, which is our mission statement, has not changed, even though how we have to express it as a community of committed Methodist disciples has to change. It has to change, folks. And uh, we're, we're going to have to work on that and reflect on that together, especially as we come into the period beyond Ascension and Pentecost, as we start to think, what does it mean to have the life of the Spirit in us as a community who have to connect in this way? Uh, we're going to, have to think about that a lot going forward. I, I'm being blessed by so many different resources at the moment and so many different uh, insights. Uh, I'm thanking God for the time I'm able to spend in his presence and prayer, uh, praying not just for myself, but of course for this community uh, that I have a responsibility to serve in. Um, today, uh, just in the, the Northumbria prayers, they were referring to an ancient Celtic um, church um, feature, uh, a person within the community called the Amkara. <clears throat> now the Anam, sorry, the Anamkara uh, was somebody who, if you like, um, was, the, the little phrase is, a soul friend. Uh, but I, 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 read, I read this here from the Today, I'll just read it to you. Uh, Previously, sins were confessed publicly before all the gathered community. Can you imagine that coming to church on a Sunday and telling everybody your sins? So when individual private confession took hold in Europe, the Roman church responded by insisting that only priests hear confessions. So you know the, the tradition of going to the, going to the priest to give your confession. And he tells you to say so many other fathers and, and, and Hail Marys and whatever. Um, it says trying to stamp out any trust in an Anamkara or soul friend. So going to the priest, if you like, to confess your sins, I took away from this idea of every one of us having the potential within the community of Christian disciples to be an Anamkara or soul friend who might be an ordinary Christian, uh, a monastic, a lay person. Uh, the, and I, this is the phrase that took me. The Anamkara, their real task was preparing you to die and releasing you to live. And so that resonates with the Cuba prepare us for death and renew us or revive us. Uh, so the Anamkara uh, preparing us to die and releasing us to live. Folks, uh, it resonates with my own sense of calling. Of course it does. But I think it should resonate with all our calling as the people of God. And that's true not only of the communities in which we live, but our place that we play within the wider world. 
And so today uh, I'm going to finish with a prayer from John Bailey in a moment. Uh, but then beyond that, uh, as I say, today uh, I'm going to invite you not to follow a song this time, but to watch a video from Christian Aid. So let's uh, hear the prayer from John Bailey. Let's pray. O oh Lord, you are the hidden source of all life. Help me now to meditate on your great and gracious plan that a mere mortal like me should look up to you and call you Father. In the beginning, you, the uncreated, released your creative power and then space and time and matter the atom and the molecule and crystalline forms, the first germ of life, and then the long upward striving of life, those things that creep and fly, the animals of the forest, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and then the gradual dawn of intelligence, and at last the making of human beings, the beginning of history, the first altar and the first prayer. O oh, hidden love of God, it is your will that all created spirits should live forever in pure and perfect fellowship with you. Grant that in my life today I may do nothing to defeat this, your most gracious purpose. Help me to keep in mind that your whole creation is groaning in labour pains as we wait for the revealing of the children of God, and let me welcome every influence of your spirit upon my spirit that may make this happen more speedily. When you knock on the door of my heart, may I never keep you standing outside, but welcome you in with joy and thanksgiving. May I never harbour anything in my heart that I would be ashamed of in your presence. May I never keep a single corner closed to your influence. Do what you will with me, O God. Make of me what you will. Change me as you will and use me as you will, both now and in the larger life beyond, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Folks, have a great day. Tomorrow we've got input from uh, Neil uh, Harland. Neil is the uh, mission support development worker for um, Sheffield District, uh, a role I was uh, involved in putting in place a couple of years back now, and Neil's just a, such a great support to us. And uh, so great to have him sharing with us tomorrow. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.